the? What the? Is your gas gauge accurate on this? I thought so. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, it just like decided to said, I'm just done. <laughs> you ever run this thing below a quarter tank? Yeah. Oh, there's plenty of gas. All right. Guess what? It's not. It's not the fuel pump. It's not fuel pressure. I mean, I guess I like that better because that means I'm not. I'm not dropping a fuel tank. And it sounded like it ran out of fuel, you know? Yeah. Just trying to see if I, did I bump the coil when I put that AC line in? All right, Caleb, I need you to be my eyes for this spark test. 20,000 volt gap. We should have a spark. That's in series, in line. No, no spark. No. So we had nothing. There was nothing showing. I didn't see anything. Let me, I'm gonna narrow the gap. Uh, All right, I set that about a, to a 10,000 10, volt gap. Nope. <laughs> nope. I mean, without breaking out the scan tool and looking at, see if we have an RPM signal, that's what I'd wanna do. That'd be my next step. I just don't really feel like going to get my scanner. I can keep it low tech. I just wanna work as easy as possible. You know what I mean? Uh, let me connect this and then I'll get you a shot of where I am. I'm gonna go to the ignition coil. We're gonna go to both wires and compare them. Okay, this will be our power feed. It's orange or green with an orange tracer from memory. That's my ASD power. Test light's gonna go to battery ground. This is an incandescent test light. And we're just connecting it right there. I'll be able to see that too while I'm cranking it. You wanna get a shot where I'm connected. So we have power on our ASD circuit. Control is next. Just going on the next wire. This is my coil negative. This one should look different. It should light too, same way, but we should have a flicker to it. Should be a flicker to this one. There is? Yeah. It's flickering? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Then that coil's bad. So what you saw, cause I can't see it. On the first one, steady light. Yep. On the second one, Flicker. You could clearly see a flicker. Very clear. Dude, that coil's bad. On this one, instead of going in series, I'm gonna go to ground. It's less stress on the coil. I always like to go in series because it stresses the coil um, as the cylinder pressure stress the coil more. So it's always better to, to do it that way. So this is now going directly to ground rather than to the distributor cap. Watch that for me. I got a 10,000, KV gap, that's not much. That should have no problem jumping that. No spark. That's a bad ignition coil. That coil failed right there. So all, uh, that's just some common knowledge and a test light. <laughs> coil control. I have some videos on coil negative control. Gotta plug the premium channel. You guys wanna know what I just did that fast and knowing that my ignition coil is bad? Come to my website, scannerdanner.com, sign up for my premium channel. I have some videos on coil negative control uh, or, or, or on ignition systems in general, operation, how's it work, scope testing them, test light testing them. In fact, I even have one or two here on YouTube that I'll link for you guys too, where I'm testing ignition coils with a test light. And we can get a lot more high tech. It's just not necessary. That's enough information for me to say that is a bad ignition coil. I think I might have one for this. Headlight bulb. I uh, felt it necessary to save your ABS wheel speed sensors. A sprinkler. Hey, it's a rotor. We're getting close. Damn, thought we were gonna get lucky. I cannot believe that coil failed. I have no ignition coil. We gotta go buy one. So we're on our way to the parts store and I was just thinking about this job and like, man, th these are the things that we encounter as technicians sometimes 
you got a customer's car in a shop. If this is a customer's car, what do you do? You call up the customer and say, I'm sorry, your, your car died and we need to charge you diagnostic time to figure out why. And then, then we have to repair it too when we're done. Like this is completely unrelated to the AC work that we're doing. This has nothing to do with it. There is no scenario short of me like dumping water or something on the ignition coil, which I didn't. This has zero to do with anything that we've done. Yet the problem revealed itself to us right there, right in front of everyone. You know, these are the things that we run into in our field. And I, I, you know, sometimes we as technicians, garage owners, we need to be less apologetic. Just call it as it is. There's no way that the garage owner or technician or whoever should have to eat this problem. This is a problem with the Jeep. You pay for diagnostic time. You pay for the repair on top of the AC repair that you're already paying for. Sorry, that's the way it goes. You know what? Shit happens. That's why they say that. It's just crazy. Like I've seen crazier things. This isn't like the most crazy thing I've ever seen. I've seen crazier stuff than that. And uh, just the nature of the beast sometimes, man. As far as failure of that ignition coil, this coil is controlled by the engine computer. There is no external module. So one of the things you worry about with ignition coil failures would be the amount of dwell time, which is the on time of the coil. And, you know, can you have a module that that is causing the coil to fail? Absolutely you can. We've seen that on Fords with their coil unplugged systems where the driver fails in the, in the computer and it cooks the coil. Uh, this particular model Chrysler system, these modules do not go bad. They don't. And the pulsing of the test light tells me I have control and uh, this is just simply a faulty coil. The other thing that can make a coil fail is when you have old ignition components, open plug wires, uh, for example, high resistance in the secondary can overwork a coil and burn it up. But it wasn't that long ago that when we introduced a, uh, the Bosch scan tool with you guys, uh, but we were doing some ignition testing, but we changed all the ignition components. Remember, Caleb? We did plugs, wires, cap, rotor. Mm -hmm. and I believe it was like, it wasn't all that long ago. No. So that kind of takes care of both aspects. One, the module causing coil failure. Nope, not on this model. And two is secondary ignition components. Those are all good. But those are things, imagine if this car did this, and now you got, you know, you pull a plug out and you see like 90 thousands gap and it's supposed to be 35. Well, what else do you need? You need plugs and you don't want to do plugs on that system without doing the wires. And you don't want to do the wires without doing the cap and rotor. So now you need plugs, wires, cap, rotor, coil. Then the diagnosis on top of the <laughs> condenser leak that you have and the AC repair. It's awful. It can snowball on you bad. But this is where you just communicate with your customer and you know, really what, what this needs is a coil. For this problem, it needs a coil. And you can let them know about the, the warnings of the, you know, 90 thousandths gap spark plugs and the old components. Uh, but right now, it needs an ignition coil. You can't keep it as inexpensive as possible for the customer while warning them of the need to maybe do those other components. But anyway, I'm Captain Longwind. So I'm gonna stop talking. This is some bullshit. I still can't believe that this did this. Um, another note, if, if some of you guys were paying attention, knowing Chrysler's and their ASD relays that power these, um, they, they power on initial key on and then they shut off and then they don't power back up again until there's an RPM signal. So when you're cranking it over, computer sees a cam crank signal, sees RPM, and then turns the relay back on, powers the coil. The fact that we had power when I was cranking did suggest that we had a good crank signal. And that's exactly what we had, which is good crank signal. We had good fuel pressure, pump was running, and uh, no spark and no control, or we had good control on the coil. So <laughs> I just touched battery positive. 
<laughs> All right. Coil installed. Coil. Coil. Yeah. Installed. Let's see if it starts. <laughs> Woohoo! Just a test light. Know your fundamentals. I didn't have a scan tour or nothing. This is just common knowledge and understanding coil negative control. All right, people. Hope you guys learned something. Thank you for joining us. Hope you guys liked the video. Uh, look forward to your comments, suggestions underneath. And again, don't forget to look in the description for other videos we've done. Guys, thanks for joining us. Caleb, thanks for being with me on this. Yep. Caleb doesn't mind watching me work on his Jeep, getting paid to do it. Doesn't get any better than that. Nope. We'll see you guys soon.